Our next guest, one of our favorites, he's a colleague here at Fox Sports Radio, Ephraim Salam. What up, brother? What up? We love What's to happening? mix it up with you. Yeah, we, and we and we we got a, obviously a ton to get to. Let's start with Kyrie because Rob and I were just talking about that. What do you think about the Nets' decision to send him away for road games yep, as well? No part time, as anything. well as home. Games, no practice, right? nothing. I think it's what you have to do. Number one. Uh, what type of distraction would that be for all of the guys doing exactly what they're supposed to do to be a part of the team and try to win a championship when constantly they're asked, hey, what's up with Kyrie? How do you feel right. about this? Do you miss him here? Do you want him there? Like, you want to talk about distracting the team, having the team and coaches and staff inundated with questions about a player who's not readily available can drive a team crazy and, and, and knock their focus off. So I think this was the only thing the Nets could do to keep that championship aspiration alive. Look, they've played and played well without Kyrie. So as long as they have a healthy KD and a healthy James Harden, they'll figure out a way to be competitive and, and still maybe the favorite. They got a chance the to win it, right? right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, honestly, and look, I know they love Kyrie back, but if I'm Harden and Durant, I'm like, yo, Let's go out there and prove we can win it without him. Well, yeah, but if, Real he, talk. if, he, if he gets vaccinated, they'll be fine. No, I, him, yeah, I, I welcome him back, right. but heck, I'm a freaking competitor. I'm James no, Harden. Right. I'm thinking I'm one of the best players that ever played. We can win it with or without Kyrie Irving. No, I get Look, it. As, I, I totally as a get professional, that. As a professional athlete, right, there's a sense of, uh, of confidence in your abilities, right? right? right. And, if, and if you're on a team and someone, a valuable part of that team isn't there, you still go about it the same way, right? Like, look, we're, we're still dominant. We're going to do our thing. Yeah, we love to have them. We don't, but we're going to ball out. Right. Yeah. Ephraim, let me ask you two, two things. First, you could give me your uh, thoughts on the whole John Gruden mess, him resigning. But also today, the Tampa Bay Bucks like, didn't waste any time. I mean, they announced today that he's coming – his, he, John Gruden will no longer uh, continue to be a member of the Buccaneers' ring of honor. He was the coach that won them their first Super Bowl and a part of their history. What do you make of, of both things, uh, Ephraim? Well, number one, I, I think when you, you have to be held accountable to things that you do and things that you say. Right now, he tried to play it off like, hey, I was angry, I made those comments, and yada, yada. But what happened is we found out he has a history of this. Right. Now, when, you, when, when someone has a history of, of, of bad behavior, I, I like to say, then this is just the stuff that we see or we found out, all right? Just imagine what we're not privy to, right? So if, if those comments he said about DeMar Smith was, if that was a, a, a six on, on the idiot scale, right. and then the new stuff came out that put it up to a nine or a ten, Imagine the things we'll never know about. This is who he is, right? And, and look, I'm not saying that's who he is. He's telling us that's who he is. So all those people saying he doesn't have a racist bone in his body and, right. and, and this right. and that, right. yeah, you don't need a racist bone in your body to have racist and, and hateful things to say about people. Absolutely. No doubt about that. Do, do you think – well, you, I know Rob asked you about Tampa Bay as well, the ring yeah, of honor. just about Tampa Bay. Well, I mean, how well, swift well, and quickly they just decided he, we don't want him to be a part of our history. Well, you know what? Because, you know, and, and good for them. And, and there'll be a portion of, of, of this country who, who's upset and, and mad because he just spoke his mind. But, you know, a lot of those people didn't mind our, our president you know, having these same right, types that's the of sentiments yep. and these same statements, right? Like, so... Look, the NFL is desperately trying to clean up his image. We know that. The whole Kaepernick thing and everything. They're at the Ray Rice. They've had some missteps along the way, and they're trying to clean up their image. What John Gruden did uh, works a completely opposite of, of their new mission or, or what they're trying to do. And I understand that, uh, especially when you're derogatory to the commissioner and, and, and all of these things. Like what? What? What does? What do people expect? Well, how do you think, Ephraim, that this is going to affect the Raiders? Uh, well, no. Forward? Let me let me go this. Way. Let me ask you this: How prevalent do you think 
the sentiments of John Gruden are throughout the NFL. Coaches, oh, on, front man. offices, we, we, we already know. We, right. we, we, we already know. We, we already know what that is. You heard what Jerry Jones said, right? You know, the, the, those guys are – They've meant so much to the game of football, so much to, 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 to what we're trying to do here. He did all of that and for, failed to mention, you know, this disparaging remarks and in, right. in, in, in all of that, right? So he was championing their, you know, what they meant to the game, right? They, they meant so much to the game, and I know those guys, right? right. Yeah, of course right. you know those guys. So that, that, that statement alone lets you know what has transpired? You got to remember, these are the same people who were up in arms when players were taking knees, and they it, remember he said, "If anybody, if any of our guys take yep. a knee, they'll be fine." Like, uh, yeah, man, this isn't right. This this isn't surprising to me at right. all that this that these type of conversations are being had privately. Uh, Ephraim, let's let's go to the field. And uh, last night, what a comeback! Uh, the Ravens were down 22-3, to and Lamar Jackson, here's the scary part right now. His first five games of when he was a unanimous MVP compared to his first five games this year, his numbers are better. He had a passer rating of 99 that year. It's 104 this year. Uh, his completion uh, rate is higher. His yards per attempt higher. What, what do you make of the year he's put together and what he's done? We saw that comeback against Kansas City late in the fourth quarter. This game, uh, he got them in position to beat the Lions with that kick. Remember he made that third and 20 yeah. pass? Yeah. I mean, he's had it. The whole year has been tremendous for him. He's dangerous. And he let everybody know on the biggest stage in football outside of the Super Bowl last night that he's dangerous and he's getting better. Right. And – the knock was, hey, can he be a pocket passer? He's going to yep. run. He's going to get hurt. Yada, yada. If, you, if this man, which he's shown he can, can master the art of passing the ball down the field, checking it down. Look, the, the long passes were great. We know Lamar has uh, an arm. We know that. But right. his ability to go from the first read to the second down to the check down, that is growth in, in, in the process of becoming a dynamic quarterback. Yes, he's won the MVP. He was extremely young. So much more to learn, and that could be a detriment to some young players. Getting to that level of achievement individually, as, as such as an MVP, you tend to walk, go away from the things you really need to work on. And, and we've seen him stay steadfast and, and, and really work on his craft. And I tell you what, Justin Herbert, uh, Lamar Jackson, and Tom Brady are fighting this thing out for MVP. No, it's uh, right now, and, and I would throw Kyler Murray in there as well. But yeah, right now those four are the leaders for the MVP. Let let me talk. Ask you about a team that Baltimore has to beat, and that of course is Kansas City. Their defense is atrocious. Um, oh, good lord! W- what is that fixable? I mean, your personnel is your personnel. Yeah, you can get a player here and there to get Chris Jones back, but is it fixable that, that just for them to become an adequate defense? They obviously don't have to be top of the league. But can they become adequate, adequate enough to give themselves a chance to get back to the well, Super Bowl? I mean, they can become adequate. The thing that I – their defense is bad. But the thing that, that bothers me when watching the Kansas City Chiefs are the bad habits that they have on offense. Yep. When you have a dynamic player, and I'm talking about a generational player, athletic, smart, can make every throw, when you have a player like that, you rely so much on him and his ability to create things when they're not there that you get lazy and you get sloppy. Some of the things that they're doing, yeah, those no-look passes are great when they're working. Yeah, right. they look bad when, when they you don't start, work. When you start to have breakdowns and when teams figure out how to cover a Kelsey or a Hill and you have to play real football, like you really have to line up and, and, and go through your reads and, and progressions, that, these are the bad habits that the Kansas City Chiefs have been getting away with for the last three years, and now they're coming to roost because teams know how to prepare and play them. No, I agreed. Agreed. Yep, All right, said. that's our man, Ephraim Salam. Great Thanks, stuff, Ephraim. brother, as always. We appreciate Absolutely, you. Absolutely, brothers. Absolutely.